Look through the scripture, and I promise you, there isn't a single instance where Jesus was in a hurry. Did you ever notice that? There isn't a single instance where we can find Jesus in a hurry. Can you even imagine a stressed out Jesus? Like, can you imagine Jesus like snapping at his mom? Where's dinner? Late again. Thomas, hurry up, get the donkey. Can you imagine Jesus with like the multitudes and we need healing and Jesus is like, you know what? Okay, hold on a second. I'm just, you know what I mean? Just like, give me one second. Just texting and be like, can, can, can you put it in an email? Okay, and, and one of my assistants, uh, the Thaddeus, no one knows what he does. He doesn't do anything. Okay, yeah, well, Thaddeus will respond to you within 20. Like, can you imagine Jesus doing that? Snapping at someone? You can't because it never happened. Now you say, okay, you know what? Jesus wasn't as busy as I am. He didn't have kids in diapers. He didn't have two jobs. He didn't have my, my econ professor. Jesus didn't have the pressures that we have today. And I say to you, I beg your pardon. Did you know that Jesus <clears throat> accomplished more in three years than most of us will accomplish in our lifestyle, lifetime? Three years, he accomplished more than any of us will accomplish in our lifetime. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cured the blind, he cast out demons. That ain't easy work. I look at my to-do list. My to-do list may say, prepare a sermon. Jesus' to-do list would say, save the world. <laughs> Don't ever think that Jesus wasn't busy. Don't ever think that, or sure, let me say better. Don't ever think that Jesus didn't have stuff to do. Don't ever think that Jesus didn't, wasn't as productive as you. Oh, but I'm a student. Oh, but I got a kid in diapers. Oh, but uh, my husband gets lost in the kitchen if I don't make him a sandwich. Like, he, can, he spend, turns himself around. Now, what are you doing? With all due respect, Jesus had more on his plate than you and I, but he was never hurried. That's why we always say, walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Walk. It never says, run with Jesus. Walk with Jesus, because Jesus never ran. I'll give you this verse right here, Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Just I could have brought you 10 verses to say the same thing. He walked by the Sea of Galilee. This is just a normal day, day of ministry. He walked by the Sea of Galilee. You know, if this was telling me the story of me or you, it wouldn't say he walked by the Sea of Galilee. You know what it say? He ran out the house, okay, frantically, grabbed his coat, threw in the thing, grabbed a protein bar in case he got stuck on whatever, backed out of the driveway 100 miles an hour, was making three phone calls, weaved in and out of traffic, and he beat the GPS by two minutes, okay? And it was a great day because of that. Be honest. I look at my life. There's hardly a day that goes by that I'm not in a hurry. There's hardly a day that goes by that I'm not rushing somewhere. But Jesus never once hurried. <clears throat> if we want the rest that Jesus offers, then we have to do the things that Jesus did. Or said another way, if we want to experience the life of Jesus, rest, joy, peace, love, all those things, then we must first adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. And again, this is one that we've, we've disconnected these things. We've disconnected the life of Jesus from the lifestyle. We think the life of Jesus that he offers, we just need to pray and maybe he'll give it to us. Maybe it'll come from the sky. Uh-uh. The lifestyle of Jesus is not a mystery. I'm sorry, the life of Jesus is not a mystery. It comes from the lifestyle of Jesus. And let me show you what this means, make it practical for you. Here we are at the start of the new year. Everyone... Okay, you know, we don't believe in resolutions. We don't believe in goals, but we all want to get better and we all want to make whatever. So whatever you call it, okay? We don't like to call it resolutions because that feels whatever, but we all want to get better. And at the start of every year, most of us would say that we want to get in shape. We want to be a little bit leaner. We want to be a little more, uh, better uh, cardio shape or better muscular. We don't, at least don't want to need like a half time going up the stairs, okay? Like we want to be able to do certain things. We want the life of an in shape person. But then what happens? We discover that the life requires a lifestyle. The lifestyle we're not so eager about. The lifestyle requires getting up early to exercise. That's not as much fun. The lifestyle requires less burger and fries, more salad and smoothie. Not so much fun. The life that we want, which we say that's what it is, but the lifestyle to get there is drinking them water or herbal teas or them kombuchas or whatever it may be, and a lot less of my chocolate mocha caramel frappuccino brass smoothie surprise, whatever it is. And when it comes down to it, we say, I want that life, but I ain't willing to do the lifestyle. 
And then another year goes by, and then we try again next January. Copy and paste. Maybe we're doing the same thing with Jesus. I want the life of Jesus. He was always at peace. I want peace. He was always at rest. I want rest. He was always under control. I want that. But the life of Jesus doesn't come without the lifestyle of Jesus. And that is what we're going to talk about in this series over the coming four weeks. Every week, we're going to take one practice. This is not an exhaustive list. Jesus' life is too much to put into, into four weeks or four years or four decades. But we're going to take four practices that Jesus practiced regularly, that were part of his regular rhythm of life, that was his lifestyle, and that we today think, that doesn't work for me. That, but I'm going to show you, hopefully, that together, maybe we can take some steps. I'll give you the, the outline. Here's the four. Each week, we're going to take one of these. Jesus practiced these four things regularly. Number one, silence and solitude, which are bad words today. Number two, Sabbath, which means I got bad news. It's going to be more. It's going to be a lot more than just show up for an hour at church on a Sunday. Jesus' idea of Sabbath was much more than that. Number three, simplicity. Number four, slowing down. This was the formula that Jesus used to have peace and joy and wisdom and strength and self-control and prayer and depth. This was the formula. And I believe it can be yours as well.